Okay, so now brings us to a very important question. Can we save all that heat we're rejecting? Like, can we just leave it in there? Because remember, in that condenser, we have this device where large quantities of waste heat are rejected to rivers, lakes, and the atmosphere. We don't like that for various reasons. One, it kills the fish, angers the birds, and it makes it more hot and sweaty during the summer. Not fun, not fun. Global warming is not a joke. So could we just take all that condenser and you know, energy and use it? Well, the answer to this is no. We can't just remove the condenser and it still work because it's a cycle. And if I don't come back to the exact same state at the end, it can't be a cycle. I have to start at one point and then come back to that same point. And the only way to do that is to reject some heat, okay? That has to happen. Now, while I have to reject heat, it doesn't mean that it has to be all wasted. For example, like right here, I have 100 kilojoules going in, and I have 85 kilojoules coming out. Now, I'm putting this into a reservoir in this diagram, but I can actually put that into another cycle. You'll see some heat engines that do that. So they have the heat in from one, and they have heat out go from the other one, and it produces work. And you might have a second heat engine which uses that heat um, to, you know, as its input. It's what's called a topper. Um, you can have a natural gas heat engine that then uses its exhaust gas to power a steam heat engine. And so one goes into the next. And so at the end, you're wasting as little as possible, okay? And some of these are getting really, really close to the max theoretical limits we could have for efficiency by doing this. We take the waste heat from one and we use it as the input heat for a second cycle. It's just at some point, heat gets wasted. There's nothing I can do about that. Some of it's gonna be wasted. The, an the uh, answer is not, not wasting any heat, but wasting as little as possible. Okay. Now we can put this into some very fancy terms, which is just the Kelvin Planck statement. And the biggest thing for this one is simply saying that no heat engine at all ever can have a thermal efficiency of 100%. Ever. It just can't work. Now, why? Because nothing's perfect. And the only way to do this would be to have a, um, a thermal energy sink that was at absolute zero and a thermal energy reservoir that's at, well, something that's not absolute zero. Since we do not have an atmosphere that's absolute zero, thankfully, we cannot have a perfectly efficient system. We'll learn about this later, but I'll go ahead and give it to you now. There's something called the Carnot cycle. It's the absolute best you can be for a heat engine. And its efficiency looks like this. We'll see this later. Don't worry about writing it down now. And so the big thing here is it's simply showing you the difference in temperature determines your efficiency for this magical Carnot cycle. This is the best. It's the best you can be, possibly. And so the only way for this to be 100% efficient is if this guy right here is equal to zero. So we never have a sink that's at absolute zero. Even if we had one, we honestly can't make sinks that stay at absolute zero because as soon as you start adding heat, it will go above that and this will no longer be perfectly efficient. So no matter what, we're always going to waste some heat. But the answer, the question oh goodness, should not be how do we waste no heat, but how do we waste as little heat as possible? So thanks for listening, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.